And welcome to Teach Star. and in today's video we're going to be discussing what does a lesson plan look like? Now this is quite an ambiguous question maybe, or a very specific question, I have no idea. Um, but I'm often, I'm often kind of left thinking about how I plan my lessons. You know, am I doing it the correct way? Uh, is there a more efficient way of doing it? Um, but this is more kind of a question of um, if someone looks at your work, someone looks at your teaching, um, I'm not talking about you know formal observations, but just generally looks at your teaching and goes to your teacher desk to look at the plan, you know, what should they see? And this is kind of video basically saying that it doesn't really matter um, how you plan, it really doesn't. Um, as a teacher, you need to be thinking about the result, the lesson, how good is the lesson? Because if the lesson's really good and everyone's learned everything that they could learn in your lesson and they leave, you know, with the memory in their heads and next lesson they come in still with that memory, it doesn't matter what you do. Um, I know plenty of teachers that don't do any planning at all. They've been teachers a long time, so they've, they've got the planning in their head, but they haven't done any planning at all. I also know teachers who don't do any planning at all because again, they're, they're more experienced teachers. However, they do one thing to plan, and I like this. I, I, I couldn't live without any plan, even now. I have taught you know my subject for, uh, was it 10 years now, or whatever it's been, for over a decade. Uh, so I'm pretty well versed with my subject. However, what they do instead is do every single question themselves that they're gonna set in the lesson. So, if they're going to set 20 questions in the lesson, they will always sit there and do those 20 questions themselves. And if they've got answers, they'll check the answers and see whether their answers are correct, see whether their working's correct. And that's what they'll do to plan. Um, like the, the, the one that comes to mind now is a maths teacher. And the maths teacher for A-level in GCSE does every single question, every single one. And it, it takes him a long time. And I don't know whether he's still teaching because it was <laughs> in my training year I met him. Um, but he he did every single question, and I, I was shocked because that takes ages. And I asked him, you know, you've been using these textbooks a while. Have you done this before? He said, Yeah, but every single time I do this, uh, every single time I teach, I always need to do the questions. It's just my thing because when I'm up on the board and I'm writing the, the question out to help the students and for them to, to learn from, um, I need to know exactly what the answer is. I need it fresh in my mind. And when I'm going around asking, or when people are asking me for help, I can just help them really quick because it's fresh in my mind. Oh yes, I had a problem with that. Basically, you've forgotten to do this, right? And it's really, really good for teachers who you know, may be subject experts in, in their area, but haven't really taught it before. And, um, you know, I can I think about with my subject that um, the way I do it and the way I explain it is very, very different to maybe a more traditional approach in, in some areas. And so when a textbook or a worksheet guides the student down the traditional approach, I have absolutely no idea what route the, the textbook's taking because I take my approach. And it goes to the same destination, but when the student puts their hand up and says, this half-finished answer here, you know, what do I do here? And I go, well, I don't know, I, I, I go that way. And it, it just doesn't really build confidence in the classroom. So I would say that that's a really, really good way of planning is just to do the questions for experienced teachers. But for new teachers, I would put as much work in as possible to have a tangible lesson. And I think most teachers um, plan using a PowerPoint uh, or, or equivalent or smart board or whatever, but they plan by using what they're actually going to show the students. Now that's got advantages because you can see the progression of the lesson, you can set out timings, I want to be on that slide 20 minutes in, that slide 40 minutes in, so it's got a lot of advantages. The disadvantages of it is that, um, as I've said in a previous video, the temptation is to put all the information on the PowerPoint and really you need to be holding that information back. You're the expert, you're the teacher, you should be saying that information rather than people reading it off a PowerPoint. Otherwise people will ask, well, could you not just give me the PowerPoint? 
you know, what is the point of me being here in the lesson? And and you might want to emphasise certain things, and you might explain it in a different way to what the PowerPoint does, especially if you've got the PowerPoint from a friend or from the internet. So I've had teachers before who um, use their planners. In fact, that's quite a common thing. You use a teacher planner and write down what you're doing for each lesson. Um, and I've seen teachers who use scraps of paper and they just have a scrap of paper with the lessons for the day and then they throw them away afterwards, uh, which there's advantages of and disadvantages of, especially when you're trying to remember what they did last lesson. It's much more useful to use a teacher's planner. But the results are the important thing, not the process. And I think as as teachers, uh, we're when we trained... Um, we're trained in a way that everything has a performer and it has to follow this structure and that's there to help um, trainee teachers with the kinds of information that they need to to have in their lesson plan but then when you're you know let out and you're you know free to roam as a teacher um, you you kind of feel that that structure still needs to be there but you've got to make sure that it's working for you and is useful to you and you know if you're a teacher that um, knows your subject really well and all you need to do is just write the answers and work out the questions that you're about to deliver in your lesson then fantastic the the gauge really is the results like of that lesson was the lesson successful you've planned fine was the lesson unsuccessful you need to plan better it's that simple Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 5 o'clock in the evening. Thank you.